There are thousands of pieces of software released every single day. And how does this happen? Well, development is how it happens. And I'm not talking about real estate development. I'm talking about software development. The creation of digital programs and interactive applications. You know those things that we use all the time these days on a computer? It doesn't necessarily have to be a computer, but let's say a digital device where ultimately it all comes down to ones and zeros. Development is how we take those ones and zeros and make them into something fun or useful for humans. We're going to be looking at three of the major branches of development. App development, web development, and game development. This is going to be a bird's eye perspective of these three branches. And honestly, I hope it helps you organize in your mind how all of this works because Wikipedia is all convoluted when it comes to this stuff. Uh, but I hope you stick around to the end because if you're interested in learning more about these three fields or even diving into one of them, I'll point you to some resources at the end which might help you get started. But without further ado, let's dive in. So our first branch we're going to look at is app development which you can think of as the apps on your phone, which is short for applications. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a mobile application. It could be an app on your desktop as well. Something like Instagram or a tool like VLC Media Player or even a, a 3D modeling program like Blender. Now, in order to make these, these apps, in this particular branch, usually it's some sort of IDE which stands for Integrated Development Environment. And so, for example, if you were making an app on an iPhone, you would use the Xcode IDE. Second branch of development is web development. Uh, think of all the websites that are out there or web services. You got you know things like Wikipedia or Reddit or even Best Buy's website. There's lots of different ways you can make a website or service. Uh, one of the easiest ways is using something that's called a WYSIWYG, like Google Sites. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. And it's essentially a paint-by-number way of making a website where it's very easy to put together ideas, but the trade-off is you lose control over what the website is going to look like. A step up from this would be a content management system or CMS like WordPress where you have more control. But a lot of times professionals make websites using a combination of three things, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. To understand this, an analogy would be if a website element was a person, HTML would be the skeleton, CSS would be the skin and looks, and JavaScript would be the muscles and brain. This is not always how websites are made, but a lot of times this is a popular way of setting up the structure. The third branch of development we're going to look at is game development. Think Fortnite, Mario, or Call of Duty. This is what I consider the biggest branch of development. The, the video game industry, as it's called, is starting to look like Hollywood in a way, where you have these big budget blockbusters where game studios are creating global products. But besides that, just the idea of making a game is the digital culmination of so many different skills. And I've talked about this in other videos, but game development pulls together more digital fields than any other development field. Now, I've broken this down into three branches, but that's not to say there's no gray area, because there is. I mean, for example, look at an app like Duolingo. That's the language learning app. If you look at it, it's an educational app on your phone, but it has a progression system that's kind of like a game and features such as adding friends online. So it's not like a clean-cut thing, but it's a good way of conceptualizing how it works. Before we get into it, what is the point of even developing software? Is it to make money? Is it to help out humanity? Could be either of those. Regardless, the developer or the person who is making a piece of software has to decide what piece of hardware ultimately 
the software is going to run on. So whether it's going to be a mobile device, desktop device, could be a smartwatch for all I know, uh, a video game console, virtual reality headset, who knows? There's all kinds of different options. So it really comes down to what the developer wants to do and why they're developing in the first place. You could have one person in any of these branches successfully create software, but often it's easier to have a team of people. You can have huge teams, hundreds of people working spread across the globe using some sort of version control system on the same project like GitHub. These developers working on these projects consist of designers, artists, programmers, testers, and of course, if it's just one developer making the piece of software, they're going to have to wear a bunch of different hats because there are lots of different pieces of software development, regardless of which branch you're in. At the end of the day, ultimately, it all comes down to maintaining and writing source code. Coding is a way for humans to write down instructions that can be translated so a computer can understand. Basically, Coding is the way that humans can write down in somewhat of a human way words that will be translated into on and off signals for a computer. Ones and zeros. There's a marriage that happens between coding and what I'll call design, whether it's app design, web design, or game design. The human touch mixed with computer execution is a beautiful thing. So the front end is what the user sees. It's the user interface. You could think of things like graphic design, buttons, animations that they see, sound effects, even background music, whether it's a website, app, or game. All the inner workings that make the front end work are what's called the back end. So this is the, the databases containing information or the quote-unquote cloud or even the code. Like I said, the, the coding is... The, the ones and zeros, ultimately, that make the, the program work. Think of coding as the instructions for various elements, those elements usually being on the front end that are part of the design aspect. And, of course, all these things working together, nothing ever goes right, and that's where you have bugs. And to counter this, you have the process of debugging, not to mention testing. Developers are always testing their product. And once they think that they have something that's worthwhile, then you have to get it ready for however it's going to be released. For example, if it's a game, there could be a trade show demo where you, there's actually people showing it off in some sort of gathering. But regardless, however it's advertised and ultimately released, then comes the process of maintaining the app, keeping it up with modern systems, with patches and updates. In a very general way of speaking, that's essentially how it goes down in all three of these branches. If you're interested in learning for yourself how to develop in either of these fields, for app development, I would recommend App Lab. For web development, I would recommend a WYSIWYG like Wix or CMS like WordPress. And for game development, I would recommend a simple block-based coder like Scratch or relatively simple game engine like Roblox Studio. These apps should get you well on your way to becoming a developer. Thanks for watching this video today. If you want to learn more about topics like these, feel free to subscribe. And I will see you next time.